Good afternoon. It's 5.30, and this is the uh, March 2nd, 2020, meeting of the Architectural Advisory Committee. Please silence all cell phones and pagers. Planning Director, please read the uh, roll call. Member Walsh? Here. Member Payline? Here. Member McCoy? Here. Member Lockyer? Here. Member Dozy? Here. Uh, Vice Chair Rotman? Here. Six uh, members we have present. We have a quorum. Oh, sorry. <laughs> may we have the staff report on the posting of the agenda? Yes, Mr. Vice Chair. The agenda was published uh, at the planning counter and on the west side of the council chamber on Thursday, February 27th. This meeting has been posted uh, in accordance with state law. Does the committee have any revisions to the agenda? No. 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 If not, uh, do we have a, a motion to accept the agenda? Motion to accept is second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those Aye. opposed? No. Um, since this is a public meeting, audience members are permitted to comment on any issue that's within the committee's purview. Comments on an item appearing on today's agenda are made at the time the item is presented. If you want to speak on an item not on today's agenda, you may speak now. Each speaker will have three minutes. Is there anyone here who would like to comment? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Is there anyone here who would like to comment on an item that is not on today's agenda? If so, come up to the microphone, give us your name and address for the record, and proceed. And it doesn't look like anybody's coming forward, so we will go to the meeting notes from the last meeting, which is dated February 18th, 2020. Are there any revisions to the meeting notes? I have one, um, and it was on the motion uh, for item number four, um, and it was that it um, that building N should include some fenestration along uh, the street. Which street? That's an additional uh, What's, condition. Well, it was part of the discussion, and I think we said to include inc fenestration. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll add that. Uh, do we have a motion to accept? Motion to accept with uh, Member Robbins. Note. A second. Second. Thank you. Do we have a vote? All those in favor? Aye. Say aye. aye. Those aye. opposed? Abstain. No. And Abstain. We have one. Okay. So now we will move on to the agenda item number two. Uh, I think it should be two, not three. Correct. Um, Sorry about that. PS Country Club LLC for a final development plan for phase 1A of the Serena Park project, PD 366, involving the construction of a 17 of 386 homes, half of the public park, both project entries and related walls, landscape and street improvements located north of the intersection of Whitewater Club Drive and Verona Road. Um, staff report. <clears throat> yes, uh, Vice Chair Rotman and committee members, good afternoon, or I should say good evening, now that we're starting at 530. Um, so this project is the Serena Park uh, development project. It was um, initially approved by the City Council back in September of 2016 and has a number of applications that were associated with that approval. Uh, it was a planned development district, a tentative track map for the subdivision, a development agreement, um, to establish terms for carrying out this development. Um, and so what is now before you that um, is part of the approval process is the final development plan. So this, what you see here on the screen is the preliminary development plan that was approved back in 2016. It shows uh, green as being the open space areas for the project and then uh, it has a brown color at the top, which is a 50-foot wide attached residential product. And the orange along the edges on the left and bottom, it's an 80-foot wide uh, lot size for single-family detached products. And then the lighter tan colors on the bottom area um, to the right of the Palm Springs Country Club 
condominium developments are the 50 foot wide detached um, lot sizes. So um, there's a total of 386 homes within this project. Uh, it is being phased. Uh, and the first phase is at the southeast corner of development, which is located at the bottom right of the screen. So what we're looking at today is the final development plan um, for the first phase of this project. This, uh, and so this is phase 1A. There's a total of 17 homes, and I'll go through the specifics of the location and all that in just a moment. Um, but phase 1A is consisting of the 17 homes here, as you see circled in red at the bottom right of the screen, as well as both project entries. So there's two primary entries to the project. There's the Whitewater Club Drive entry located at the southeast corner of the project off of Verona Road. And then there's the San Rafael entry off of Sunrise Way that's also part of the project. So what, they're, what this phase involves is the 17 homes at the southeast corner at the bottom right, as well as both uh, configurations for the entries to the project, as well as landscape at those entries. So I'll start with the San Rafael, um, just to give you an overview of what the project is, I'm gonna, or what my presentation is. It's gonna be uh, primarily the landscape and the project entries, as well as the park area. And then I'll go through the um, elevation plans in the PowerPoint. So to start at the San Rafael Sunrise entry, they are reconfiguring that driveway, which is currently a public uh, or a private road, and it will be reconfigured to a public um, roadway standard as the street that connects San Rafael to Whitewater Club is a public street and was required to be so as a part of the project approval. So this is that entry that would be reconfigured. And so you see that it is being straightened um, in its alignment and it will uh, involve landscape on both sides of the project entry. There will also be a wall that will be built along the edge of the landscape uh, and it'll, it will be designed to continue what you see along Sunrise and the Four Seasons development. So that wall that you see currently along Sunrise, just north of this entry, um, there will be a continuation of that wall that wraps around um, or through this, along this street, Golden Sands Drive, on the north side or the top of the street on this diagram. And that wraps through uh, to the main entry to Four Seasons or to another entry to Four Seasons. So the landscape that is being proposed is uh, basically a street that's lined with Mexican fan palms, uh, Washingtonia Robusta along the street, which you see circled or uh, in the green circles, the larger green circles. And then they have um, shrubs um, that would line the street as well. Uh, also connecting that, um, as I said, connecting the, to the Four Seasons in, um, development is an, an additional landscape plan that you see here showing the different types of landscape for that entry off of Golden Sands Drive. So it's gonna be a, a, a Gavi, um, Bougainvillea, um, Texas Yucca, right, Texas Yucca, Natal Plum, things that we commonly see for landscape plans here in Palm Springs. So moving uh, on to the other entry off of Verona Road and uh, Whitewater Club Drive at the bottom right of the screen, you see circled here is uh, where the homes will be built and be built in this phase. And those, again, there will be 17 homes. And this is just a kind of a close-up version of that circled area. On the left was the preliminary development plan, and I've outlined where the final development plan phase one that you're looking at today is on the plan. And so you see it's uh, creating the new entry th into the development. They're creating the internal roadways as well as uh, the first segment of the public street from Whitewater Club Drive and then the southerly half of the park, which is on the right side of the primary drive. So going through um, some of the different areas, so this is the primary entry from Verona off of Whitewater Club Drive. You see they are creating a landscape uh, median in the middle of the driveway or the roadway. And those will be, there will be trees um, 
clustered within that uh, median island. And then on the, along the edge of the street, they have um, trees that will line or in groupings along that street, as well as a continuation of Bougainvillea along the lower portion of, or the lower growth of the, uh, that's the lower growth of the planting lining the street. They will also have a connection for the CV link that's on the right side of the roadway. So that's the white portion that's, um, that's shown on the right of the driveway. That's a little bit wider uh, than the tan area, which is actually a walking path to the right of that. And so, um, as I said, it is a mix of desert planting materials that is commonly seen in our um, landscape plans that, you, that come before the committee. Um, and I'll get into some of the concerns with the sizes of the landscape. Um, there are some concerns with the one gallon sizes being proposed, so that's one thing to note. Moving along further north on the primary entry to the project site, this is a, a portion of the public park space that is located on the right side or the east side of the primary roadway that goes through the project. So um, it is lining, or there's a mixture of different, different uh, desert planting. As you see here, uh, we have different uh, trees and um, shrubs, Texas ebony tree, um, Palo Verde trees, um, different palms. Um, so there is a mixture of plants and trees within this area. Moving along further north, um, again, it's a, it's a passive park space that has walking paths, different plant materials, trees. Um, and so, as I've noted in my memorandum to you, there is some concern with the, in terms of the quantity of plant materials that you see in this space and this space. Um, so that is something that we thought could be enhanced a bit in terms of the plant materials being uh, increased in quantity as well as uh, sizes. So, because all you all the plant materials in terms of the shrub uh, materials, they're, they are all one gallon size um, plants. So, uh, you'll, there's a few that are five gallon, but for the major, for the most part, there are generally one gallon plant sizes. So, increasing the quantity as well as the size of plants. Moving along to uh, the west side of the primary roadway that goes through the project, there's two tennis courts that are proposed, parking area as well as landscape around it. Um, similar theme in this area, they do have a little bit more densely planted materials, however. Um, common trees that we use here in Palm Springs. And then as I said, um, there's the two product types that are proposed in this um, phase, and that's the the 50-foot wide lots and then the 80-foot wide lots. Um, this is the 50-foot wide lot area where you have homes that back up to an open space and really serve as kind of the primary facade for the home, uh, whereas the back of the home, which we typically call the front of the home, uh, where the garage is located is where vehicles enter and um, and that's primarily kind of the back of the home. So um, the front of the home faces the green spaces and so what you have in this screen is just some of the plant materials proposed between the homes in, um, in phase 1A and with the 50 foot wide lots. Um, Again, this is the 50-foot wide lots, the green spaces in between. There is a mixture of grass areas as well as drought-tolerant plant areas. Um, so this just kind of gives you uh, an example of what is happening in between the homes, open space between the homes, where the you know, areas that are uh, not walled off, but uh, really common area walking paths between the homes. And then moving along, so the products uh, that are the 80-foot wide lots that are shown here on the screen, they do show uh, typically two trees in each front yard and then a mixture of um, drought-tolerant planting within those front yard areas. Uh, 
Um, and then again, these are uh, two more of the 80 foot wide lots where you have um, a Palo Verde tree in one instance, and then a um, date palm in another. And then there's one lot that actually faces Verona for the project. And this lot is, uh, I think this is the one lot that's actually 100 foot wide to be consistent with the other homes along the street facing Verona. Um, but what they have is a California fan palm um, as the primary tree in the front yard and then lantana, bougainvillea, and a mixture of other plant, uh, drought tolerant plants. Uh, so they have submitted a wall plan that shows you uh, this this exhibit here shows you kind of what the layout and configuration of the walls would be for the 50 foot wide lots uh, so you see primarily the lot the areas that are more private or secluded from the common areas um, towards the uh, green space between the homes is located fronting on the streets where they could have a small pool area or a spa uh, or just plant you know planting and uh, one other thing that they are doing as a part of this project is they are uh, improving the uh, connection for Palm Springs Country Club condominiums. They are improving um, or adding the, that street, a connection to back to that street, uh, as well as a gate, which you see in blue on the screen. So this gate would match the gate that's located off of Farrell Drive. And I'll show you the detail of that in just a moment. And so these are the different um, designs of walls, typically a six foot wall in the development. Um, where there are private yards that abut the street, they're generally five foot back from uh, the street. So there is planting area that would buffer the wall from the street. Um, and so, uh, as I said, the entry into the Palm Springs Country Club condominiums would be gated with uh, stone columns on both sides of the entry and a gate to match the existing gate that's located at the primary entry off of Farrell Drive and Racket Club, or near Racket Club. Moving on to the single family homes, there, as I said, there's the 5,000 or 50 foot wide lot homes uh, where they have the green space in between and the 8,000 square foot or the 80 foot wide lot minimums. And this table is in your staff memo on page five of your staff memo. And it shows a comparison of the preliminary and the final development plan in terms of what plan, uh, what each plan square footage was, the building height, <clears throat> excuse me, and then that each each home has a two car garage with driveway parking in front. And so the plans that you have before you are basically the same plan. Um, and I'll go through just some minor detail differences between the preliminary and final development plan. Um, so these are the, this is the plot plan for the different floor plans. This is the, um, what is anticipated for each lot, the different plans that they are proposing. Um, and so what was submitted back in 2016 or 15 when it was originally, 14 when it was originally submitted, were different street elevations to show you um, what uh, the product types would look like along the street. So this is the 8,000 square foot lots or the 80 foot wide lots in the preliminary development plan from 2016 and now the final development plan um, that is proposed. So there really is there's no difference in terms of what is conceptually being shown in this um, plan. But when you look at the elevations, I wanted to kind of just give you some of the specifics on what has changed or what um, specifically they're requesting as a part of a, um, the final development plan. So this elevation here is plan 1A. The front elevation um, facing the internal streets um, is is what you see here at the top and you have uh, you of course see the stone element and then the stucco uh, and then the fenestration and the garage door at the top when you 
look at the final development plan. That's still part of the project. However, they are proposing the front elevation option on the lower exhibit here. So they are removing or taking off some of that stonework um, for the front elevations. This is plan 1B um, in the preliminary development plan that was approved back in 2016. <coughs> And here they have the front elevation option, again, where they've removed some of the stonework and it would just be a stucco design. So that's really the primary differences that we see between the preliminary development plan and the final development plan. Um, this is what you see here, preliminary development plan 2A, uh, and then the final development plan where you have the front elevation with the stonework as approved in the preliminary development plan at the top and then below it, the front elevation option where that stonework is removed and it would be a stucco elevation. In this uh, exhibit here, we have the different um, elevations shown along the street, um, or I guess this would, in this case, would be the interior uh, open space areas. This is the elevations that were shown in the preliminary development plan for those 5,000 square foot lots or 50, 50 foot wide lots. Uh, and again, it's the same elevation that was submitted for the final development plan. Uh, but again, there are some subtle differences where plan 1A has the stonework and then they've removed it as an option uh, as you see here on the top left. Plan 2A, this was the preliminary development plan from 2016, where you have the stonework at the top, and then they've given us a front elevation option where the stonework has been removed. So <clears throat> what I'd just like to do now is just go through some of the things that uh, staff noted as, as um, potential conditions that the AAC might consider as, as they're a part of their review of this project. We are recommending that uh, approval be that the AAC recommend approval to the Planning Commission for this development, our final development plan. Uh, we do recommend, based on a review of the architectural review findings, that the roof colors, uh, that there be a lighter earth tone option um, to ensure that the color reflectivity complies with building code requirements, um, as well as generally having a lighter um, roof tone to be uh, to re, you know, generally uh, not having so much weight for a, for a heavy color on the roof, a lighter color would uh, not be as heavy uh, if it's on the roof. And then number two, that the uh, mechanical equipment be relocated to minimize impacts to pedestrian access around the homes, just uh, as a safety issue. And then lastly, as I mentioned during my presentation, to increase the plant quantities and provide larger uh, sizes uh, with a minimum of five gallon sizes uh, for the plant materials within the park. So that's uh, kind of a summary of the project. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, any questions for staff? And I, one other thing I'd note, yeah. we do have all the plant or the uh, color material boards here to kind of give you an idea of what um, staff was reviewing because unfortunately we weren't able to include that in the packet. So this this does show all of the proposed materials for the project. What is shown at the top is the, the metal roof, uh, the stucco, and then the stone options. Thank you. Uh, we have any questions for staff? No. Member McCoy? Um, the gate that you showed us that you said was the, with the condos where, I'm, that is on the, which, um, the lower section by the homes or that's the, the other entry? Um, just show you on the overall probably easier to, to for a point of <coughs> reference <coughs> so there's an existing gate uh, in the condominiums that's here for the public here and the new gate that's the developers 
is building to match that gate is going to be located here. So this project is not going to be gated. It's going to be a gate here to match the gate that's on this side. Okay, so that design matches an existing. Mm -hmm. Number locker. Hmm. We, I'm on sheet LD1, which is referenced throughout a lot of these sheets here, there's um, there's a detail for a chain link fence. It's a park fence. Where's, can you show us where that is proposed? And are there sample while you're looking for that, are there samples of these masonry walls that are proposed on the LD1? It says, right now it says gray or tan, and then a grout to match seems like really super loose. What sheet has the reference to LD1? Um, it's going to be on a few of them. I think it was the one we were just asking about. John was asking about where there's a gate detail. Yeah. LD2. And then I feel like I saw it on some of the plans also. This, this yeah, exhibit? for sure on LD2. Yeah. This yes. one? So, let's see. And then I, yeah, I didn't, I see the fence detail on LD1 and LD3, okay. but couldn't, wasn't asking your help on where that's located on the plan. <clears throat> so my understanding is that gate is being proposed along the east edge of the project. So on sheet 34 and 33, you'll see on the right side of the park, the fence, but I'll have to have, and I'll show the public just for reference what I'm looking at. So this is the park here. So it's, I believe that's this fence here. Yep. And what's the neighbor there to, I, I don't see a north arrow on this plan, so. North is up. Yep. Yep. So it's just it's just open desert. Mm. So chain link fence along that tire east side, and is that the the only location? That's my understanding, but I'll let okay. the applicant confirm. Gotcha. Uh, I have a question. Um, at the, I'll call it the San Rafael entry they're showing a proposed uh, slump stone wall um, adjacent to the street that that entry serves also four seasons so was there some type of agreement uh, between the developer and four seasons to to wall those retention basins off at that point versus leaving those open yeah that's a question i had also for the developer <clears throat> and I said, you know, that potentially could be a area that is invisible and whoever goes in there goes in there. Right, because it's walled on the other side behind those buildings, so it's kind of a... So, yeah, his response was that was per the Four Seasons request. So really nobody will be able to look into those or it's just kind of a... Yeah, that I guess the intent was to match the wall along Sunrise so that it just mm -hmm. continues to wrap along uh, the street. And is that it, wall is a solid wall, no fenestration to it. Solid wall. It does have columns that he's calling right. Them, but yeah. Okay. And then um, the at the um, I guess Verona entrance or at the other entrance adjacent to the street on the blow up plans. I, I believe it's showing a paved area that that would be the cv link trail that's adjacent to the street correct this is the cv link okay and how wide is that i believe it's 12 feet 12 feet 14 feet 14 feet okay and i think that's all the questions i have now thank you real quick member lockyer yep 
David, did, I was asking about samples also for these some of these block wall materials, and now including the one Tom brought up was the slump stone, which there, it there's calls out for a detail on that slump stone wall, but it's actually missing from LD1 also. Yeah, I, um, I'll have to have the developer clarify that. Okay. Any other questions for David? Member Walsh. David, on the, um, the, the previously approved elevations, pretty consistently the difference between what was and what is is the removal of the stone mm -hmm. element, correct? Yeah. All right, there's nothing else in terms of the reconfiguration of them that I could see. No, that's okay. the only change. Okay. Okay, if that concludes our questions for staff, uh, is the applicant here? Um, if so, please come up to the mic, give us your name and address, tell us about your project. You have 10 minutes to present and two minutes of rebuttal if desired after any public comment. You can sit right there. Okay. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. Members. My name is uh, Eric Taylor with Serena Park. I've been with the project since the beginning. I'm one of the landowners. Um, today, uh, we have with me um, Bob Bombardier, who is our landscape architect. And I'd like to uh, maybe give you a little bit of background on what we're doing and then try to answer some of your questions. So the, um, does everybody understand basically the Radburn concept on what we're trying to do with the, uh, the orientation of the houses? That's pretty clear. So the idea is to have that, that open space um, connecting to the houses that they open up onto, uh, with the exception of the 80-foot wide product. Um, we uh, have worked with the neighbors at Palm Springs Country Club. There are some boundary issues there. And there were some, how do you deal with the interface once we have this change in land use next to it? So from our standpoint, and we have members of the HOA. Um, I think there's a majority of the board here tonight from phase one at Palm Springs. And our basic premise going into this is that from our standpoint, it really is we want to work with them with what kind of wall they want there, subject, of course, to your review and approval and, and, the, and the Planning Commission and the City Council. So we laid it out to them and says, here are your options. And then I talked to David about it. And one of the things that we're willing to accept is that we have a condition that, you know, subject to your approval, that the wall is also subject to their approval because it's got a, it's really their, their privacy on what goes there. And Bob can speak to the, you know, some of the specifics about the wall details and what and what is on there. Um, the same goes for the Four Seasons along San Rafael. Um, there's a, a, a lot of history there. That was a, it is currently a private road, so, but it's going to be used for the majority by the mobile home park and by us. So there's a liability here. You know, Four Seasons is paying for the insurance and has the liability, but the majority of the users are us. And so we did do a very complex agreement with them. Same thing. We gave them the plans that you have today and said, please critique them. They did. There were some comments. Very specifically, one of the comments was, because I originally put in a, a tube steel fence there so you could see through, which is the comment that David made. That was my gut instinct, but it was not what that HOA wanted. So we did say, okay, you know, we'll give you what you want because it's your wall. You know, that's going to be their end use, and they wanted that privacy. So um, on the... CV link, that is a connector to the CV link. The actual CV link will go along the levee, and we're, we're working with CVAG on that right now. Um, so we weren't sure which was going to come first. So this project provides an opportunity to have a link between San Rafael and Sunrise and uh, Whitewater and Verona and connect to the levee going over to Gene Autry um, without um, the CV link funding and getting all the the work that they need to do to work along the back of that levy, and this project could basically be an interim solution, but it's not the official CV link. So it's the same dimensions, it's the same criteria, but that's the, you know, kind of the backstory on what's going on there. Um, relative to the plant materials, I would I saw the condition, I saw what David wrote, and. I know I think some of you are landscape architects, I would assume, um, and Bob is here to answer those questions. Um, 
if you look at the table of the plant materials, I think you will very quickly see that the majority of the species are indeed five gallons and larger on the plan, that one gallons do not predominate. So uh, from a horticultural standpoint, I'm a very large advocate of using the appropriate size plant materials, including one gallons. And if there's some reason that we should be putting in five gallon lantana instead of one gallon lantana, please explain. Um, you know, I have learned the law of unintended consequences from violating what our landscape architect tells me to do design wise. So I try to follow that. And, um, and I think that he's done a good job. Um, and we have a lot of large material in that one of the things that I would mention that did not come up, I know David had a large staff report to put up, but one of the things that is in the materials is that we paid a local um, arborist to come out and catalog tree by tree by tree all of the existing plant material on site, mostly all palms, which ones could be saved, which one couldn't, and just in the phase one area, there's 163 mature palm trees of five different species. And the planting plans that we've given to the city um, show by number where those trees get transplanted. So we're trying to reuse that existing plant material, which I think is a really nice advantage of this, and that's one of the reasons you'll see a lot of the palms in the landscape uh, palette on this. Um, but there's a, a very large report that shows where those go, so we tried to incorporate them in there. Um, one of the features that I, that I would want to um, throw out there that we did on the tennis courts, you'll notice there was a grove of trees just north of the tennis courts, and that's a copy of, what, of, a, of a facility that's already out here in the desert. You're probably familiar with the, uh, the Virginia Oak uh, Grove that's in the middle of the Indian Wells Tennis Complex that's on DG, that they're in a very urban, rectilinear form. Um, that's what I'm intending to do there, is to give a, basically a shade garden outside those tennis courts. Um, so uh, if you have any questions for me, I'd, oh, uh, fencing and walls. I think the question got answered, but just you know, to reiterate, that chain link is just along that eastern boundary. And we have had, and that neighbor, who that is, that was a subdivision. And I've had you know, very friendly and extensive conversations with the owner. That subdivision expired 10 years ago or more. It's long gone. Um, he needed to have detention on that property and doesn't have a place to put it, so the design really doesn't work. Um, but that's basically a, a, a defunct subdivision, and it borders onto um, uh, Indian land to the south, and the Indians, uh, we worked with them, and they did refuse to give anyone access for a connection down there, so he's got, uh, he's kind of landlocked. So we don't know exactly where that's gonna end up end up going, but uh, we do have a lot of issue with trespass and vandalism. And so there's a reason that that chain link is there is that it's easily repairable, fixable, and we have existing 10 foot along that edge and it's constantly getting torn down. Um, and we think that that's probably the right solution at this point, something that will um, somebody can get over easily if they want to walk in there. Um, but it, it provides some kind of a deterrent without somebody crashing it and breaking it like they do to our walls and our tire chain link. So that's why it is what it is. Um, what else? Oh, the, um, the AC condensers on the side yard. So we do have five foot side yards. Um, I would s request that, you know, if we want, if there is an issue, um, that we have with the width of the axis along there that we use a suitcase type unit, something that is uh, fairly narrow that we can get by, but not have the condensers in the front or the rear of the yard, the rear yard facing the open space because of the noise factor and because these are fairly small yards. So I think that the side yard's the place to do it. And, uh, you know, we do have two side yards, so there would be one without it but a suitcase unit could solve the problem. Um, and, the, and the dark roof color, we don't, we don't have an issue with that, of course. So if anybody has any questions, you know, I'll well, be available. We'll take, if you're finished, I'm we'll finished. take public uh, comment first and then we'll bring you back up. Okay, great. Uh, so if there's anybody who would like to speak from the public, um, please come up to the podium, give us your name and address. You have three minutes. I saw that some people have signed in already, so 
uh, David, do we want to call them off the list as they signed up? No, we can we can just have each member come up as they wish. Okay, all right, fine. So and just and just announce yourself, please. So anyone please from the that's what we're saying. okay? Okay, but if oh. anyone wishes to speak now is the time. Well, anybody who'd like to come up and speak, you're <laughs> welcome to. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Diana Grace. Uh, I reside at 3772 Jasper Trail in Palm Springs. And I am the president of the Four Seasons Homeowners Association. And I'm here tonight to just discuss one issue that we feel is very important to our development. And that relates to the uh, pro uh, prospective landscape uh, installation on Golden Sands Drive. Uh, we have reviewed it, and in our opinion, it is too dense. Uh, it seems to be overpopulated with plants, and it does not seem to be in keeping with the type of uh, landscape installations that the city has uh, utilized in the median on Tokwitz and things like that. It appears to be a very lush design, and I think it would be great down at Laguna Beach or something like that. But uh, it will be in stark contrast to the desertscape we design that we have from uh, Golden Sands to our entry monuments. Uh, that is our main concern. And uh, our uh, desertscape landscape was approved by uh, the Desert Water Agency a few years ago when we submitted a uh, project for a turf buyback program. So we just feel it will be uh, a little too dense uh, in comparison to our area and also other uh, HOAs in the general vicinity of our community. And Mark Sherman, who is uh, our secretary, has taken some photos uh, to illustrate this, and so I'll leave that up to him. Thank you. Thank you. Next person, please. Good evening, my name is Mark Sherman, 3359 Savannah Way. Um, my home literally sits on uh, San Rafael and Sunrise, so it's on the corner. So I'm very interested, as Eric Taylor knows, about this entire project. <clears throat> as Diana was telling you, uh, we think the planting along um, Golden Sands is a little too much for our area. And I apologize for not making enough of these pictures. These are, okay. <clears throat> these are samples of different streets um, along Sunrise in the neighborhood. The first one you see is um, Golden Sands as it sits right now, and that curved section will be uh, straightened out with the plantings. The second picture that you see is our monument for Four Seasons at the corner of San Rafael and Sunrise. The third picture you see is going north down Sunrise with Four Seasons on the right-hand side. The next picture you see should be um, San Rafael looking west. And if you notice, all of the landscaping is sparse. It looks nice, but that's the entire area that looks like that. All of the different um, communities have the same type of landscaping. And if you can see, the next picture is down Sunrise, um, going south. The next picture is Francis, which is a, a block away from us. And that shows you what that community looks like on the outside. Again, the next picture is De Anza and Francis. Again, very light and minimal planting. The next picture is, uh, I believe that is Francis as well, looking 
um, east. So you can see there's a lot of open space between the plants. My concern is five gallon plants, as they start growing in years to come, we're gonna possibly be pulling plants out. I do have a degree in landscape architecture, so I, I kind of know what plants do as they get older. We also have a couple of, um, I had some notes. Um, I looked at your plan, and I've, I've talked to Eric Taylor about, we have eight street lights that are on um, Golden Sands right now. And looking at your plans, I did not see any. Um, I think your three minutes are up. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Anybody else like to address the committee? No? Please, please come up to the microphone, please, and give us your name and address. My name is Donna Buckinger, and I live in Phase 3, uh, Palm Springs Country Club. And I thought the gentleman here was going to show us more of the entrance and the pulling together of the Palm Springs and the Sierra off of Verona. And I would like to see more pictures and have more detail on that and how the Palm Springs Country Club will be affected by it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public, from the audience? No? If not, uh, we uh, will ask if there's questions for the applicant. The applicant may want to come back up. And now's the time for, uh, well, actually, if you have any rebuttal, you have okay. two minutes to rebut. <laughs> I, don't know that it, I don't know that it's rebuttal, per se, but just maybe some comments. Okay. Um, so uh, I had heard from Mark about the, uh, and about the, uh, the plantings, and of course, we've got no offense to anybody, but I've got David asking for more, and they're asking for less, and um, I guess, you know, would probably be willing to try to work something out to make that thing work. So um, in terms of Donna's uh, comments, I'd like to spend some time with her and show her the plans and explain how it works. Uh, Mark made a comment about the streetlights. He's correct on the plan sets that you have, they don't show. Those show on the civil engineering utility plans. They would not show on the landscape plans as part of the background. And, and I believe, Mark, you have those civil plans, but they would not show here because those are a public, they're public streets, so that's a public standard, light standard. Okay, you may stay there. Uh, do we have any questions for the applicant? Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, I, I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, could the landscape architect explain the concept behind the park area? Bob, can you come up? Hello. Bob Bombardier, El Newman Design Group, landscape architects located in Westlake Village. Uh, as far as the park, uh, we see the primary around the uh, houses being a little denser and then around the usable areas where people are a lot. Uh, as you start to diminish away from streetscape, we uh, created nodes of areas of specialty as you uh, walk through this path. We even introduced some botanical names as a botanical garden as you see a sign there. But I kinda, I'll just use a, a simple term that the plants may look sparse on a plan looking down, straight down on them, but they're no different than the, all, all the areas through town. And I use, I'll just use my hand. If these were a series of plants in plan view, and then I take them and I, I put them in a horizontal position, they kind of be like a louver. You're gonna, from a distance, they look dense, and they will grow, and they are a mixture of five gallon and one gallon. But you see around the, as you're walking through this, it's dense near the sidewalks and, and lighter in the middle, because you won't notice it. Just like the desert, you see green across it and, and variable in color, so. That, that was our intent there. Uh, we did arrange the uh, transplanted uh, Washingtonias along the main street, and we uh, introduced uh, the other trees in groupings, uh, and then along the uh, perimeter as well, those are transplanted trees as well. 
So I don't know if you have a specific question, but, but we try to do foundation planting, building up to a building or building away from streets. I didn't quite hear an answer to the concept of the park question. Well, Can you focus on the park and explain what Well, that's what I was trying plan. to do, that, that people places are a little more dense and we, and we make a transition. So if I could look up here. Here, here's the mic. The, uh, the landscape that's here, and you'll see it's, a, it's denser here, denser here, and denser here in the usable areas along the path, and it's less out here, and then we still did do uh, special areas that you view. But these plants out here, when you take them and you see them from a distance, they, they multiply. Uh, so your eye travels much like along land, and they'll vary in color and texture, and that's, why, that's the concept. If you want me to explain the, the plant palette, uh, it's much like what you have here. Uh, they're uh, succulents and grasses and uh, spreading plants, like Eric said, lantana. And those plants were specifically when you plant a plant, we're hoping that they'll get six to eight feet across and uh, grow into uh, little multiple uh, masses, but there'll be color and textures throughout. And you're going to comment? Yeah, I, I think oh, yeah. I the, the question's more related to, is it, David, it's approximately four acres and it's a public? This portion public? is probably a little less than that because it's only half of the overall five-acre okay. park. I think the question is, when somebody comes here, how do they use it? Are there, I don't see any benches. How wide is the DG path? Um, a, a, a open space area for passive, is it active recreation, passive recreation? What's the overall uh, emphasis? I know that the botanical garden is, is part of it from, from the let me, let me try to answer that. I, you, you may already know some of this, but um, these 17 houses in this portion of the park is only about half of the park. And the part that, because it's adjacent to these houses, and we're in the process of designing and putting together the other half of the park, what's here. So there are other facilities up here, and the kind of facilities that you're talking about, um, and there it's in the development agreement, and we have to do it all within phase one. So. In real life, what you're going to see, even though this is the reason this is like this, is because this is a subdivision map, so we can finance these homes. Because you need to, for sale, lease, or finance, you have to have a subdivision in California. So it's small and restricted in, in size because we don't want to be borrowing money for 80 homes at one time. We're doing it for 17 homes. And when we come in and do the next group in here, then we'll finish off the rest of the park, which is this square here. Sorry, TV. That square here. And this has turf areas. It has a pitch and putt golf course. It has a dog park. It has restrooms. It has a children's play area. It has benches. And relates to the CB Link, which goes along here. So CB Link connection is here. That's the Y. There's the restroom. That's the more intense area that comes in the next phase. Does that help? Um, well, if you go back to the diagram, when I look at the sheets um, from LP3 shows that section of the park there. Right. And then LP2, and it goes all the way down to the entrance. Yes. Are you saying there's a, another, that in the next phase of it there's more of it but I guess the, 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 this, this looks the, like a pretty good size area and I see a lot of plants and a nice trail but really nothing there's no are there any landforms are there benches are there seating areas is there it's a, a um, it does have dual purpose so this is open the public this park is being paid for by the developer maintained by the HOA but it's a publicly accessible park. And the reason for that is because it serves a dual for function as a, a detention basin. So it's gonna be from the height of this table down to the floor, three, four feet lower than the street grade throughout, and it would be flat on the bottom. This whole park is flat on the bottom? Yes. So there's no there is, berming there, or land? Because I did, no, I looked because at the we need, this, we need the volume for capacity for detention. This is the downstream area of the development. And because it serves that function to protect the community, then the 
So you put, and then if I, if I just follow along with where this is going. So the next portion, ne let's call it phase two of this same park. Yes. You rattled off about 12 features there that seem somewhat attractive, none of which are in this part. It's all in phase two, and that's at the same level? Yes. So bathrooms, all that lower and bottom of retention the bathroom basin. Itse the bathroom itself will be up at street level. We'll put that above grade. But it's not a habitable structure, so. But it, yes, it would be not in the bottom. It's next to the street. Hmm. Okay, doke. Thank you. And what would you estimate of, of what we see on the sheets presented today is the overall it's area? Right. Can it's you go a, back to that Lakers one slide or? that kind of showed the, it showed this park's portion and there was one, there you go. Uh, no, yeah. Mm -hmm. So see on the left there. So that Can maybe gives you a better off. idea. That's so, the next portion. But this, this, this is a little bit misleading. The berm for the levee is right there, mm -hmm. and this is all dog park in here. So this is really part of the park, too. And, and that whole green space that we're looking at east of the entry road, that would comprise the 4.3 acres? No, the 4.3 acres includes this. Correct. Does not include the tennis court area right. and right. does not include this. So we might be looking at almost three acres mm -hmm. out of the yeah, four. Kind of. About that. Eric, could you stand on the other side? Because when you do it from there, we don't get to see. Sorry. Did you, did you, were you, was there something specific, Donna, you want me to point to? Well, I, I think you did it. Actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I have another question. Uh, so, you mentioned that there's going to be existing palms that will be used, and, and I noticed on the plant palette, some of them are uh, filifera palms, and some are the Washingtonia robustas. Yes. Um, what yes. height are the robusta palms? Or, uh, They're all over the map. Um, most of them are over 20, and some of them are 40 to 50. Yeah, yeah. and the, the way, when I look at the plan, they seem to be arranged in more of a linear fashion so I'm just wondering how you work with those various heights in that we do have pictures of all of them and tags the no. we do have pictures and tags on all of the trees and we attempted to match them up and we use the worst uh, I would say worth the less healthy ones of not perfect trees along the edge mm -hmm. of the back but but they would vary in height even though they're at like equal spacing they're, they're going to be varied in height because of Mi microphone please yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're going to vary in height because of all kinds of factors that they've lived with for the last, for a long time. And, and according to your arborist, it, it's cost effective for you to yes. take them, relocate them, replant them, even at those oh, heights? Oh, yes. We went through all of those, all of those equations and what it would take. That's, we spent quite a bit of time doing it. And they are numbered on the plan, so if you actually look at the construction plans, each one of the transplanted ones has a number like 127, and then you can go to the report and look at 127 and see what it is. Okay. And there's, there's, Dac there's Phoenix Dactylifera there also. Right. It, is there any um, berming or landforms uh, proposed for the entry on the sheet we're looking at um, currently on the screen? We, we definitely will have some contouring where we can. Uh, areas like this in here. One thing we did do uh, when we transplanted the, or going to transplant the trees is we put a concrete colored ring at the base of the tree, seven foot diameter. I think it's seven. And they vary by size of the tree, but see, they, these are actually concrete rings. So it's going to, rather than just be a tree in the, in the flat dirt that has different colored rock in it, we identified it and made it a little more special uh, just for aesthetics. Also, as, as I'm sure you're aware, in the north part of town, we're a long ways from being in the areas up against the hill relative to the rock percentage in the soil. But there is a fair amount of rock in the soil, and we will use it in the landscape. That's where it will go. So that's also going to be used. We have a, quite a bit, mostly in the smaller sizes, you know, under three and, feet. And the material, um, there's a DG path called out. Will that be 
bordered with anything? Uh, yes, it will have a, it will have an edge on it. I believe it's shown on the detail. It's called out on the detail. And also, then, this is a dry stream bed with boulders that Eric was talking about, but we introduced these features along the path. And then, what is the material adjacent to the DG path? Is that it's it's actually it looks like decomposed granite, but it's heavier, a little heavier. It's a rock. Oh, okay, so it's it's not native soil, or no. it's so that will be covered as yes, well. Yes, and that, that like I was saying, this will be one uh, color, and inside around the rings will be another color. Again, just aesthetics, but to create kind of a design element. Correct. Okay, I think that's all my questions. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Um, yeah, yes. I'm still a bit confused about the public park because as I look at the, if you can go back to the plan where it shows the overall, the kind of both pieces. It you you mentioned a lot of amenities that um, pitch and putt, dog park, all that stuff that I can't imagine fitting into that little additional space up between there and the drive. So I'm just confused a little bit about where all that's going. All right. Um, I didn't bring it with me tonight, and I probably should have because it's an excellent question. There is an exhibit that is approved by the Planning Commission and the City Council as part of our development agreement that actually does show all of those facilities and where they go. And um, it is online. So if you go to Serena Park to the development agreement on the city's website, you can see it. It's colored. Um, it has those details. And it's... Uh, um, Imagine this pair, this is 200 feet from there to there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's really part of it too. And so the dog park is in that, in that area. It's a, it's a one hole pitch and putt from, from different angles. Um, but I, I think it fits well with the facilities that we put in there. Correct. The features that you're seeing is, is a reflection of what did get approved by the council and the planning commission. We, had a right. couple of meetings on it. David found it. One more question. You mentioned boulders, but I are you, can can you confirm that's actually what you mean? You were talking about the entry sheet LP one, um, I believe, and you were pointing to the you called it a dry river bed, and you said boulders. Wait, what size is that material? They're going to vary. Because it looks like riprap here, but it's, I don't, is anything called out for that? I'm not sure that we've uh, specified a size, but we normally have a, a rock bottom and then a boulder side with random sizes, and they could be three to five feet. Mm -hmm. um, based on my experience working with the soils engineer and the geologist on this site, the majority of the material is between 10 and 24 inches. Most of it. And we're used talking about using existing on site material that would get sieved out as part of the grading process. So, not really boulders, just rock. It's round. River Don't you? Rock. Not what, like I said, not what you're going to see on the, that side of town, it's what you're going to see on our side of town. It's a smaller size. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Question about the chain link fence. Um, it will this the future park portion. That chain link fence will continue on through that, and where will it end eventually? And you've got a dog park and pitch and putt that you were just talking about. Is that chain link? It's a dividing line in the second phase of the park. And and can you also yeah. explain a little bit sure. more about what? Damage is going on, and what is existing, and what, why, the deep a little little more background on the can we go decision that, for chain link. Can we go over in the overall overall, David, the uh, first concept, the approved, the but the, not yeah this one exactly, okay, so some of this is hypothesis because it's the best we can do. I spent a lot of time looking at police records and talking to people and trying to deal with this and talking to our neighbors and seeing what's going on out there, and so. Um, the, excuse Bob, the chain link only goes from here approximately 
to there. That's it. It's the only portion that would be chain link on the property. This levy, as you probably know, has a service road on top and connects to Gene Autry. And that's going to be part of the part of the CV link, and that's going to be open to the public. And they're in the process of building that now, is my understanding. So that so that, you're saying the chain link is going to basically dead end at the levy? Yes, just up, uh, not quite to the levy because there'll be a dog park in there, and it'll have probably some version of a chain link fence also, or a wire mesh fence of some kind. Okay. And relative to the vandalism on where it's happening and what's going on. Right now, they're coming in off of Gene Autry. They're coming through here. They did come through here, but we stopped it by putting in K-Rail, and that's been pretty effective. They did come in here, and we stopped it with a uh, wire cable, and they're coming in here on this side by tearing down the chain link fence over and over and over again. What? Okay, so as a design element, the choice of chain link versus a low, you, you know, you've got concrete walls, you've got walls with uh, some tubular steel on top. Right. What was the, the decision behind chain link versus an upgraded material? Um, what, what we've had with some, of the, with some of the block walls is a lot of graffiti. What we've had with tube steel, I don't think is strong enough where you've got somebody actively trying to trespass. It's just gonna get destroyed very, very quickly. It's too flimsy of a material. The chain link is a lot stronger material, but it's easily fixed. And if it's low enough, somebody, we're not gonna stop people getting through. So they have to fall over, but they're not gonna get their motorcycles through very easily. But can they get in through Gene Autry? Yes. We're hoping that with uh, increased presence out here, that it's going to put a big damper on it because all of a sudden this area isn't available to play in anymore. The sandbox becomes a river rather than our site. What's proposed along the future phases along the wash for in terms of fencing or, or walls? So the future phases along the, the, the wash in here, the proposal is that they will have side yard block fencing and there are walking paths throughout, and these will connect into the CV link, so it will be open. Okay. Any member of COI, more questions? No? Member Lockyer? Yeah. I had asked David, so I'll ask you. The, the, do you have material samples of these block walls on LD1? Can, no, we didn't super, submit any samples. We were just matching the adjacent. Where, show me where oh, these yeah, go on the plan because it. I have some concern that it's um, it's just a really low quality. So these were block, and <laughs> that's a pretty expensive burnished block there. That I'm saying, and what's called out here is a super cheap natural gray or tan, but doesn't say which one. To me, it's important to specify. But we have uh, quite a few projects that about this project, and they vary by color and gray. So we're trying to match. Uh, what we would do is identify those with our details for the final construction documents. That's what we're going to do. But we do have a variable. Some of them are gray. What we are doing in, within our project uh, will be a, a high-end um, and also on the corners, uh, you see the, the uh, detail of the precision block, and then you see extra lines in, in the scores. It's called a Hollywood score, but it's basically a large block, and it has another score down the middle to make it look more detailed on the end corner lots. Mm -hmm. So that's a good plan. So everywhere there's a green line or a red line there, right now it says 6616. Mm -hmm. Natural gray or tan grout to match two side precision. One one detail calls out, and that's I guess wall B calls out that vertical score you're talking about. The other one is wall A, which is just a six six sixteen, so sixteen inch long, stack bond looks like, and natural gray. I believe what it says states what it is in the legend itself. Uh, no, I, I know what it is. Um, this, this would have the extra score lines, and this would be the, the single 
block. So you see the detail from the ends, and that's the difference of the color. As far as the gray or tan, I'm, it doesn't really matter. We just wanted to match what was there. What we're going to do in the project. Well, what's be, there that you're matching? I'm not following you. Well, you have to look at the overall track. There, we, we have perimeter walls, too. Uh, well, give me an example the, right here. They are, uh, there's maybe an existing connection on this block that's different than these blocks. In, in color or texture. And then we have, if you go back to the overall, we have probably uh, six different connections of different heights and block that we're blending to. Um, you go to the, the first diagram? Yeah, this one. So, so we have different heights and combinations here and different here and different here. So there's variation. So that we just put it on the plan as a generic gray or tan, but we were going to match the adjacent. Which sounds like you're going to have six, potentially six different types of block. Potentially you could, but not on the interior of our project. Or, or even more exponential than that, six types of block, more colors too for each type. Well, I'm just it's starting to sound, maybe you've answered the question as best you can. We can, I guess, comment on that. It feels like a lot going on, so. It's not, our intention is to, to match existing, much like the slump stone out at uh, the entry uh, of Golden Sands that has slump stone already coming around the corner, so we're matching that in that blend. Show me where that, where that is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's it's actually the street that is that it? No. Yeah. San Rafael they're saying up there. Oh San Rafael, excuse me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, that is some stuff. I think what what Bob's saying is that some of it is so we've got a neighborhood that's got traditional block fencing in large part, not all of them, but some of them in there, and the idea is to try to match that and work with that rear yard condition. Match that on the, your front yard. So if, if there's 12 houses on that street that's existing, you're gonna have 12 different block types and colors on your street. Is that what I'm hearing? No, no, I, I can see how you got to that, but the idea is to come up with something that's as close as we can and maybe there's gonna be five or six of them that, that don't match. It'll be in the backyard, not the front yards. Yeah, those are backyards. Okay. This will all be consistent. Scores at the corner, all the same. Mike? All right. It'll be all consistent within the tract, uh, just different scores on the corner to be a better aesthetics. And bl the blending is really the perimeter to blend in with what they have already. It'll be minimal. Okay. Yep. Anyone else? Yes, Member McCoy? Okay. On sheet. Let me return this. Sheet 28. Uh, we can see some of the backside of the residences. And we've got a very, very small planting plan, so it's kind of dis difficult to discern exactly what's going on, but um, it's a lot of repetition, um, and it's a, I get that it's a really small space. You've got a couple of trees here and there. Um, is there, are there utilities underneath what's going on? Is there any place to get some trees, some shade? Okay, good question. Um, these are going to be private streets, so the utilities are joint trench in the street as opposed to what you're, even though they're gonna look like a public street where normally you would have a PUE on the side, we're actually putting the utilities in the street so we can plant. So the answer is yes, there is options to do that. One of the things that we want to do here as you're driving down the street and see it is that you're not looking at a row of garages. They're tucked back in and you've got landscaping in front. But it is a fairly small space and putting trees in small spaces is problematic sometimes. 
is there opportunity to have some softening and, and you know, it's the desert and pavement gets hot and yes. Yes. Uh, are, are you being particular at this small strip or this small strip? I mean, this is a, a new wall where the new gate is being uh, put in for the adjacent neighborhood. And the reason we did these walls here, uh, much like the, the Radburn uh, concept, is to leave a, a good space to get a, um, and we demonstrate that on one of our plans, the uh, possibility of a jacuzzi within the yard and still be able to motivate around it and have landscape and uh, this actually has uh, five feet with the double row and and as one person might say it's dense another person might say it's really small it's we pick plants that are going to grow up against the fence and have something of color in front of it so it won't appear to be uh, light or dense it's it's right for the space let me embellish a little bit on that, Bob. One of the things you can see on the, uh, on the underlying topo here, you can see the tree line. This is quite densely planted and has been in there for over 40 years. So you've got spillover from here that doesn't show on our planting plan. And likewise, these are the private yard spaces for these homes, which have the room to put in trees. But are they street trees along the street because of the narrow space? No. Okay. And then... Um is there street lighting in these areas? No. Okay. Are there um, at the garage doors in Palm Springs, it seems to be very popular to light your garage door with down lights. Do you have that feature? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and if so, what quantity usually the, of down you, lights do usually, you have? Usually the, the police door? department requires the numbers be lit, but we are in a dark we are in a dark sky zone because we're up against the wash. So that's why there's no street lights. So the intention is to try to minimize outdoor lighting and keep it all down. I commend you for that. We're quite cognizant of that issue. Um, let's see. I guess my other question would be, you know, we, David might uh, have an answer to this too. Sconces, other exterior lighting on the residences you mentioned the dark zone is there mm -hmm. have you been cognizant of that with the uh, anything attached to the houses as we well? have not got there yet with design okay don't know so yeah when you're looking at that keeping them pointed down yes sh fully shielded is yeah it's important to code. yeah yeah it's important and the CV link drawings are out there showing how they plan to light and not light that trail so really that's going to be another factor that's happening out there. You know, are there bollards or the down lights? How does that work? I don't know exactly. Okay. Member Walsh. Thank you. This, um, David, the staff report <clears throat> may, uh, takes issue with the color of the, the metal roof and um, look, looking for something to be of a lighter tone, I take it. Okay. Um, with respect to Title 24, that, that may be an insurmountable challenge because I think the required um, reflectivity coefficients are so um, stringent that short of cream, white, pretty light colors, they don't seem to be able to make it work, to comply. And I'm just wondering if any investigation yet at this early stage has been done. We have not done Title 24 analysis on this. Okay. I have done, we are, um, as, as in addition to being a developer, we are a track builder. Yes. And I just finished a track and I did put solar on the roof as in order to make our Title 24 numbers. Right. So it, it is the it's um, tight. color of the metal roof. Understood. Yes. That Understood. That would have me concerned. Understood. Yes. And I'm trying to make the numbers and make it work. Yes. yes. Is, I would wonder, is there a plan B in terms of material if you can't get metal to work? That's a really good question that I don't know. Okay. I know that we've seen some of the more recent construction and it's been white. Correct. Um, that has been my experience. To, yeah, anyway. Okay. It, it could end up being a... Um, uh, a, a non-starter in terms of design direction with respect to material. Okay. So. 
That's Any other questions? Good. Member Pauline? Yep. I have some questions. <laughs> okay. Um, sure. I've done a number of projects in the Radburn style um, concept. And um, the thing that concerns me about this is, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you walk me through how a guest arrives and finds the front door of, an, of a house? Good question. Okay. Um, if they are parking in the driveway, there's a gate right there. Okay. So walk in the gate and then you're in the in the side yard. You're in the yard. If many people get used to using these paths in a Radburn subdivision. That's what I, the, la the last one that I just finished was a Radburn subdivision. And that's what they did. They're parking on the street and they're walking up and they're walking in. And even the residents, and certainly if they, uh, we're not gonna see a lot of kids here, but if they had kids, that's what they seem to like to do. And so the streets are fairly, the cul-de-sacs are fairly short. Most of them are 250 to 300 feet long. And at that distance, at that short of a distance from where the street is, um, I, I think it works. I think it's doable. If it was five or 600 feet, then it starts to get, become a problem. So are you saying that uh, guests can park on the street? Yes. Okay. So these are parked both sides, okay. public street standard, um, sidewalk one side. So in your unit plans on the 5,000 square foot lots, in your unit plans, uh, I think it's 2A and 2, three, the two and 3. Yes. Um, it seems like... And let me just pull it up. Uh, so here's 2A. And if you, if you look at where your front yard is, um, which is basically the off the master bedroom, Did if you, you can. Did you floor plan up, dude? Oh, you don't have it. Okay. Your front door is on the opposite side of where you, I'm looking at 2A, the 17. 160 square foot. Yeah, this is the large, this is the 80 foot Yeah, we want the, you should relabel the 80 foot wide things, yep. uh, four, five, and six or something, just to. Yeah, um, keep the confusion down, yes. So, yeah, so you have your entry door on the left side of that plan, and yet your uh, enclosed yard is on the right side. So somebody coming into a gate off the driveway is coming into the opposite side of the house from the, from the door. They have no way other than a side yard gate to get to the front door. To this front door. And the same is true for the uh, plan three. You have a, it's, so my comment is, I think you need to rethink this. Okay. Um, yeah, because I think it's very confusing for somebody arriving at the house to actually get to the front door. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, the, for the intention here is to use the green belt and walk into the front door there, but it's a post order. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm going to park in your driveway, and then I have to walk all the way around to get to the front door. Okay. Um, We'll talk, uh, you know, uh, I think this is more of a discussion item among the commission, but I have, I think some of your elevations are really busy and the proportions are off and I think they really need to be re-looked at and maybe simplified. Okay. And whether you use stone or you use stucco, I just think that it's really complicated, okay. more complicated than it needs to be. All right. Um, <coughs> And I, uh, let's see here. And I'm not going to get into the specifics of the elevations, but um, I have lots of notes about it. <laughs> um, I think the big thing really was the overall plan and how you access these units. Okay. And, and in my experience, when I've done Radburn in the past, and we haven't had the luxury of parking on the street, we've actually had separate guest parking that's been assigned at the end of the green belt mm -hmm. so that it's more obvious that that's where you go and you can walk up the green belt. That may be something that you want to look at here. I, I don't know. If you have all the street parking, maybe you don't need it. We have so much street parking Okay. we try to avoid having okay. parking bays. Okay. So I guess the question to you is, are you willing to relook at the elevations of these yes. houses? Good. All right. Any other questions? 
No, if not, then thank you very much. We're going to deliberate. Okay. We have some discussion. Member Poline, would you like to go first? Um, so, so I guess my first comment, and I'll probably add more as we get through this, is the public park area does seem odd to me. That there is, it's a little meandering path that goes nowhere, and I can't imagine anyone using it. Um, so when the other amenities are there, there is actually seemingly a reason to go through it, but it feels like it's really going to be a kind of an unused space that will slowly kind of deteriorate over time unless we add some destination or, you know, some kind of a purpose to, to be there. Um, I agree with the elevation comments. Um, they are kind of busy, and especially when I see the glass block, I get a little bit scared. Um, that's my comments for now. Okay. Member Dozy. Um, I, I'm in agreement that the park area is underwhelming. I, I think there there's an opportunity there to um, provide more amenities. Excuse even, me, can we keep it down? Yeah, e even in the setting of this natural pathway, walkway, um, things such as shaded seating areas, um, and there. There could be a combination of some hardscape areas with benches and seating. Also, <clears throat> that the design should take into effect or account the uh, the direction of the wind in that area. Um, you know, and the trees could be arranged in such a way to help mitigate some of that. And then, just also, there's a couple connections uh, from the pathway uh, to the DG paths uh, from the uh, CV link. So they're an opportunity there for a bike rack or some, you know, but I, I think it needs to be further developed, um, including landforms. I think they can provide the retention um, in a variety of ways and actually create some pretty dramatic landforms that would still meet the retention requirements, but also add a third dimension to the overall park um, in terms of landforms. Okay. Thank you. Member Lockyer? The the park and the retention basins is kind of puzzling to me. Also, I, I heard something about the fact that it is a retention basin and they're somewhat limited to how much playing with the topography and the terrain that they're able to do. But the retention to me, and on our projects, it's a cubic footage calculation, and so there's a balancing of the grade. So more excavation or more fill is more export and to try to meet that, to add some design elements to that. The, the other thing, besides it being kind of a path to nowhere and not much purpose or intent for anyone to use it, which I think is a seriously valid observation, feels like a lot of trouble for something that's just not attracting anyone to be in there at all. I, I don't quite get it. I'm not quite sure I get some of the plant palette either. I, I understand it's something that everybody sees or everybody does and to me that's that's not a bonus or a positive it's kind of a negative the placement of them looks kind of random so i'm not sure there was a a concept here when i look at some of these lantana red yucca placement it just looks like filling open space with dots to me without trying to create maybe some interest or grouping or something else, some nodes of activity that I think you briefly touched on, but I, I'm not seeing implemented here on the plans. So that's how I feel about the park. Um, this is similar about these some of these entryway sheets that we're looking at in terms of landscape where it feels um, underwhelming and I just don't quite get the design not sure I see the attractiveness on some of the plant material, the placement, the alignment of them. I don't quite know that I understand the concept here, including this meandering path and as well as the, um, I think you called them a dry riverbed, also feels like something else that sure 
everybody's doing it. I'm not, but I'm not sure why we're doing it here. So the individual lots too that another member here brought up. Um, I'm trying to remember what sheet that was. I think it was 28. Am I right on that? Um, 28 has got. Yeah, 28. So when I, you visualize looking down that street, and, and I suppose this is going to continue throughout every street in this development, it, it's going to appear, and I appreciate that some of the neighbors have contributed some mature landscape material. That's nice, but to me it almost doesn't count. It's not a part of this project or this development. And so when I visualize looking down this street here on, on page sheet 28, it just feels like a very sparse, hot, I'm visualizing these vertical block walls along the, the tree line, nothing planted taller than 30 inches along the streetscape here. And so there's no kind of greenery that's kind of overlapping into the street here or there. It's admitted that these courtyards are reserved for homeowners to um, place a jacuzzi in there or, or a spa I think was referenced but but really it seems like there should be some plant material that's dictated in, in I'm talking about vertical tree like material that has a canopy that can outstretch into the street or move the walls back for the courtyard to allow for that and some interest along these streets it just feels kind of like a barren concrete jungle with concrete block walls and I'm I'm still super confused on the block walls, and I think uh, it'd be nice to see what the final verdict is or a plan for walls and finishes and things like that throughout. It didn't feel like to me like that was an item that was very well thought out, so I'm not quite sure that we should be asked to approve that today. Jumping over... Along the same thing with the walls, I think this, there's some details missing for the slump stone and the finish of the slump stone. There's some natural stone called out, but it's a TBD. I believe that's at entryways. It was on a detail sheet. Thirty-nine. Um, just confused. I don't. I don't have the clear picture on what any of this stuff looks like. I see quite a few material boards up here for the architecture, but not much in terms of landscape or landscape architecture or any. Um, there's references on the sheet forty three. Sorry, thirty eight. Uh, the top right shows a white powder-coated metal gate. And then there's the fence at the bottom left, which shows a black powder-coated metal fence wall. That's a partial fence above, on top of a CMU wall. Um, and then this chain link. So out of those three details, or out of the five details on this sheet, four of them, I, um, unless maybe we can add some more detail or clarification on this, it, it f I'm a little worried about what that finish is, if just left to the decisions or the potential for what this could turn into based on the specifications provided here, which are vague. Um, the architecture, I, I don't know. I, this is a question for staff also. I maybe should have asked it earlier, but what are we being asked to do with regards to approving the architecture? Because I kept hearing that there was something that was originally improved, and I saw a barely visible change or proposed change that was being proposed. So I'm unclear. So the project or the application before you is the final development plan. It is the final architecture that would be built um, if approved by the Planning Commission. What was reviewed previously is obviously very similar to what we have before us today. Um, so you can make comments 
um, on the architecture and make recommendations to the Planning Commission in terms of revisions. Um, but we need to be sensitive to the fact that there was previously a project that had this architecture approved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's clear. It's still fussy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's still fussy. I think, I don't know that anyone's mentioned it, I think it has a very dated look, and it looks like some of the materials chosen. Glass block was pointed out. Go I, ahead. Yeah, I would just add that the, obviously you heard today the applicant is um, willing to make modifications mm -hmm. based on Vice Chair Rotman's request. Yeah. Yeah, well, appreciate that. And I think for... Um, you, you often, you know, what we're asked to do up here is to see, if, you know, verify that these things are fitting in with their surroundings, these things being architecture and landscape. And that's one requirement, one thing we're, criteria we're asked to review these projects by. And I don't know the area very well, so I'm, I can't tell you if it fits in. I would say that if I look at Palm Springs as a whole, to me, I don't see really a place for some of the barrel vault that I'm, I'm seeing here now. There were some battered walls that looked like some of them have stone, glass block, just a design that has a, an appearance that looks like it's from another decade in history and not necessarily a great one. So I don't, I don't quite get it. I feel like, um, I, it does not fit in with Palm Springs, and, and that's my input on that. Appreciate that it was already approved, and I think it could use an overhaul. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Member McCoy. So on the sheet 28 comments that I made, um, I was going towards, is this the standard that we're setting up for this entire development? Uh, these will create some uh, pretty uninteresting cul-de-sacs that will be very repetitive throughout as you, you pass through the development looking for uh, your, your friends and neighbors looking down each little cul-de-sac you know, purple fountain grass given to the landscape crew that's trying to be as efficient as they can will wind up being little purple round stumps. Um, not a lot of design to, to something like that when it gets to the maintenance crew. Um, some shadow patterns, some interest, even, you know, a palm tree that it doesn't need a huge canopy to create some interest and in something going on. Um, you know, I, I, these are small yards, so I understand that trying to give the benefit to the homeowner, uh, I appreciate that, but um, you know, for the overall, overall good of the community, there might, that might be a spot to give it a little more thought. Um, with the park, I agree with the comments that have been made. Few, most of the plants, I'm good with what you've called out. There's a few things that I've seen that, you know, Ocotillo's called out at one gallon, things that are extremely slow growing or, you know, they, they're clearly defined to be a focal point. Something like that really should be a larger scale. Um, so the, some of those, uh, review some of those in, in size and scale. Um, where else was it? The, you know, I can go with the, with the fencing that you're talking about. Um, also the fact that it is a retention basin. Um, you've got water flowing, uh, potential for water flow, that uh, concrete wall will hold it in place. So um, that movement is necessary. But uh, I would have to agree with Member Lockyer's comments on some of the design details in, in Rotman. Um, I, you know, the garage doors to me, 
um, look like they're playing off of the glass block element. Uh, it's a, certainly a trend that um, is here, and by the time this gets built, built out, it may be that you look at it and say, oh, that's when that was built. Um, so you know, take that as, as you will in, in your reviews. Um, so that's what I've got, thanks. Member Walsh. Just a few things that probably echoes some of the points already made. It's, it's hard for me to evaluate the, the usability qualities of the park space in total without a graphic that kind of shows it in total. So as we look at phase one, it's sort of we're left with just seeing something that seems to have some um, pointless paths of travel. And uh, parts of it kind of become a bit of no man's land, I think. I would worry about that. And then you think about the heat cranking up, and it's sort of like these are sort of semi-unusable spaces, probably. If we saw the whole thing and it, 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 there was some animation in our minds in terms of how the spaces would work and the purpose of them and the dog park and how you get in and out of the dog park and everything else you've thought of, it would probably be easier to evaluate and possibly support. Number two, I too have trouble with the, I mean, I, I struggled with um, some of the floor plan confusion uh, on the points of entry and guests understanding. So where am I going? How these things get addressed? Where you park? Where you park efficiently? Um, okay, and then uh, let's see. Uh, oh, the elevations. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's in, in general, they, um, they are starved for simplification. It looks like much ado about, you know, it uh, and and um, graphically, it could be done more more justice, I think. But they look um, there are parts of it that look a little bit cliche and overworked, but yet still not settled in terms of of the quality. They don't look well studied or cohesive to one another. That's it. Thank you. Um, well, I don't know that I have a whole lot more to add. Um, I think. Um, I think the, some of the floor plans definitely need to be reevaluated, in particular how you enter, and that there should be some thought to making an, uh, a connection between the street side and the green belt side um, as per, uh, per, uh, per individual lot so that you, you have a way to, if you're parked in the driveway, you have a way to get to the front door, or if you're parked if you come in through the green belt side, you have a way to get to that same front door and that there's some sort of connection that connects the, uh, connects the two sides of the house. Um, I think the architecture needs a lot of work. It does feel very dated. Some of the choice of materials, um, particularly glass block, some of the internal design features with the uh, rounded alcoves and the barrel vault ceiling, I think all of those are are going to are feel feel dated currently and will feel feel dated in the future. Um, I think it would be help. It would help, as uh, um, Member Walsh mentioned, to get a sense of the entirety of the park, um, not just the first phase, but to actually see what the whole thing looks like and how it relates to the dog park and how it relates to the wash or CV Link, as much as you may know at this point. Um, I think that would help us understand. Um, understand better what, what's being proposed. I think it also might help to get some cross sections uh, through the park and through, if there are elevation changes, uh, where the berms are, that sort of thing, that could help clarify some of what's going on with the park. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, uh, my recommendation is that there be a subcommittee um, maybe with planning commission, members of planning commission. We did this for Marillon, and I think it was very successful with a couple phases of the Marillon project to review uh, the design of the homes and the planning. Uh, in this case, we have a, 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 a fairly significant landscape element as well. And I think whoever, I think if, it's a, if the committee agrees to have a subcommittee and if planning commission agrees to be part of that, uh, we definitely need somebody from landscape as well as architecture to do to participate in that. So, um, I guess we're ready for a motion unless there's some more discussion. No. So, anybody like to make a motion? May I ask a question? Sure. Just in terms of process, so you you are um, 
foreseeing, Chairman Rotman, that it would be a sub that we it would be passed today, but with assuming that the, that vote carried, but it would um, the subcommittee would be working with the the owner on these. So what what uh, so what happened with Marilon um, and a couple of other projects is the individual uh, builders came in, developers came in, and. There was a, a committee of three from Architectural from here, Advisory right. and a committee uh, uh, and three members from Planning Commission. Yeah. And we sat down with the developer right. and their architect, landscape architect, and worked it out. And worked it out. Right. Okay. And a, and a project of this scale, I think it really needs to have, have those kind of working sessions to really make some progress. Right. Okay. Without coming back here, you think that's That is my question, yes. Well, I think what we did with Marilon is they did come back here after the sub uh, after the subcommittees met, and we got to a place where everybody kind of agreed. It came back to AAC, got approval, and then it went forward. So then, then that motion, I think, what he's saying, oh, you're talking, Mike. Yeah, it sounds like then what. What that idea says is it's not approved today, but we recommend that it have a subcommittee that meet and discuss this, make some modifications, and then return after that process has aired out a bit. Yeah, the, uh, I think the, uh, if, if the committee's in agreement, I think the appropriate thing is that we deny it mm -hmm. and then have the condition that we um, have the subcommittee. Is that, David, is that? What, if, from what I'm hearing, it sounds like it, the motion would be to deny as presented. Yes. Um, noting that the committee has some concerns based on the architectural review criteria that we've looked at today uh, and discussed and come back at a later time working with the subcommittee of the AAC. It wouldn't be a AAC and Planning Commission subcommittee. Well, that would point. be up to Planning Commission to decide if they wanted to participate right. yeah, in we that. Can move it, we can move the project forward with a denial recommendation as presented uh, yes. Noting that the AAC would like to work with the uh, developer uh, in conjunction with the Planning Commission. Yes. Well, then maybe that subcommittee, it sounds like, needs, I think what you were suggesting is it's a subcommittee that actually meets in person, sits down, and oh, yes. spends a little time versus sometimes we, we do a kind of an email. Yeah, no, it would. Uh, we we met in the conference room here at City Hall yep. with with the developer and. Um, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, motion. Can I mo make a motion? Yes, sure. you may. <laughs> I move. <laughs> I move to deny the project and that uh, uh, they come back and work with a subcommittee um, of three members from AC. Um, to refine the project. Is there a second? I'll second that. And can I add that hopefully that includes the planning commission a member or two? The subcommittee. So, so yeah, we would bring it forward to the planning commission with your recommendation and um, a recommendation that the planning commission establish a subcommittee as well. Mm -hmm. Unless the applicant prefers to address these issues before it goes to the Planning Commission. And we'll leave that up to him. Well, sorry, now I'm confused. Because I, I think what we're hoping, but I don't want to speak for everybody, but that, that the subcommittee remain before the next step of Planning Commission for the project. And then we work through some of these, I think, just with a Planning Commission member I'm sorry. Yeah, the planning commission. Well, it would have to go forward to the planning commission. So, if the developer chooses that to hold off on planning commission review, which he, he could request, then we would work with him with the AAC subcommittee to address oh, these issues only. only. Got it. That's if the developer chooses to can proceed <clears throat> to the planning commission with your current recommendation, then Butter. that's from what we did with Marilon would be the, the process. So let me just ask a question. Um, when, Marilyn went for, when Marilyn went forward, um, just in terms of sequence, did they come before us, then it went to Planning Commission, Planning Commission decided to set up the joint subcommittee? Yes. So that's the same process that would happen if Planning Commission wanted to participate in a subcommittee? Yes. Okay. 
Well, I guess it's up to the applicant to make that determination. So our, the motion still stands yes. mm -hmm. as, as yes. uh, stated. Yeah, well, I'll second that. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. Now we need to identify a subcommittee. I would be happy to volunteer for that. Great, thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll volunteer for that. Hope, yeah, hopefully we can make those meetings on a Monday or Tuesday, earlier side of the week, if possible. Well, I've done it before. I'll do, I'll do it again. <laughs> Next time, boys. <laughs> no. So uh, at this point, um, that's the end of our meeting. Do we have um, uh, any new business? There's, um, if it, this is not the venue to do it, then just let me know. But the, there's some improvements that were made on Racket Club Road west of Palm Canyon Drive. Uh, so there seems to be about three median type of structures that went in recently. And I'm wondering, it seems like that's a major thoroughfare. Not sure if that portion of Racket Club is west of Palm Canyon. But I'm wondering, did that come through this department? And, and what is the, pro like, what are those things? And how did they just appear? It's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd have to I ask know the answer. public works. And, I know the answer. <laughs> I'm afraid. Go ahead. No. Um, so it was uh, a response to the neighborhood uh, requesting some traffic calming oh. on Racket Club. And it is a temporary Good Lord Almighty. measure. Mm -hmm. um, and as fact, there's some discussion that they, parts of it or all of it are going to come down very shortly. Uh, there was some data that was collected about um, how much, it, if it reduced speed and how much it did. And based on that information, the city with the neighborhood may go forward to create some sort of more permanent, more aesthetically pleasing traffic calming. That'd be nice that if there was something, I feel like, gosh, there's just so many things that are occurring along that road that are deterring from the aesthetic appeal of that whole neighborhood. And this was just the third one that I have to ask someone about. The first one was the, you know, the, it's such a natural setting along along the north side of Racket Club as you're heading west there up the hill. Somewhat natural. There's a very linear straight curb the whole way up the hill. Um, I just wonder if there's something that can be done. The, the, the work that's been going on there over the past couple of years along that north side, they've done a decent job of re-naturalizing that after they trench and install utilities and it gets re-naturalized and looks somewhat appealing. Um, but God, was, then the painting of the curb red because there was a neighbor that didn't want some parking going on there while there was the Desert X art thing going on. And so the event would open up at 3 o'clock at Desert Palisades at the top of the hill. And there were some neighbors that complained. And so the curb got painted red. And then these things appeared. And it just feels like it's going down fast, and and it's decreasing. Well, the, the red curb was not only because of the desert okay. X issue; it was um, that we would get a lot of homeless, yeah. and and uh, lovers lane. It became a lovers lane, so people were parking along there. They were going out into the des into the desert. Mm. They were potentially fires. We've had two major fires in that area in the last couple of years. Okay, so. The red curb was meant to stop fires. Stop, stop fires. Well, no, stop people from parking there that didn't belong there. Okay, gotcha. So, mm -hmm. that's so you're. That's my neighborhood. Yeah, it's your hood there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we're trying to. Uh, this is not part of this, but we're trying to come up with some ideas to beautify 
racket club and make the traffic slow down because all the, all the truck traffic going sure. up and down, yep. you know. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good news. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. We can talk about that on the side. Okay, well, then. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Anybody else have new business? I have one. Um, I... I don't know when it can happen, but hopefully I'd like to invite everyone on a field trip. I just completed the uh, renovation of the Kirk Douglas house um, and to see if it was a possibility to get you guys there to do a quick tour. Great. So um, probably in about two weeks, I think, but I'll, uh, I'll confirm a date and, and then we'll coordinate it. It's, it's, it's pretty cool looking now. Robert yeah. was there. Yeah, I was there. One Looks the great. Yeah. yeah. Um, Will do. David, do you, anybody else? David, do you have anything? Uh, the only thing I have is that, uh, as you know, we are updating our general plan, and our website, psgeneralplan.com, is active, and we encourage everyone to visit it. And we have currently a survey that we're conducting on the 2007 general plan policies uh, or 2007 general plan vision and priorities. Um, so we're asking people to complete that survey and tell us if they feel that those policies are still valid and active or valid and appropriate for the next 20 years. So if you can go to that website, fill out the survey, and we'll tell all your friends. PSGeneralPlan.com. So that survey will close on Friday, March 6th. I, I have a question. Is restudy still a uh, motion that can be made, or is it just approval or denial? Um, we're trying to stay away from that now. It is really just because effectively what happens if you're restudying it, you're recommending denial. Mm -hmm. um, so be clear. To be clear, it's a recommendation of denial as proposed, and just so that it's clear for okay. the Planning Commission. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what's the date of our next meeting? Monday, March 16th, okay. 5.30. Great. So that we are adjourned at 7.27 p.m. until March 16th. Yeah, thank you. It just went through my head. <laughs>